Microsoft, after uh, quite some time on their Windows 10 platform, which was a big improvement from the 7-8 generation that drew people all kinds of ire, uh, put Windows back on the map, but people were ready for more. Um, not more head, but you know, after more head. <laughs> well, they do but, want, they do want but, more. But people were ready for more. They were ready for what was next. And you and I both attended the big Windows 11 launch, but in the spirit of friendship, I'll let you take this one first. I appreciate that. So we've been riding uh, Windows 10 uh, for many, many years. And the thesis was that Windows 10 was going to be the last number in the operating system. And it was going to be Windows as a service. And I, I think a few things changed. So first off, uh, the value of the PC as a platform uh, went up. We saw this with COVID. Uh, but also, uh, I think Microsoft realizes that it's more dependent on its hardware ecosystem that requires generational lifts to drive new hardware uh, purchases and to drive uh, new features and improved uh, experiences. So there was so much to cover uh, and I want to give I want to give you a, a little view of of what it looks like. And as you can see, it, it looks different. I mean, the start menu being in the lower left hand corner is, is no longer uh, a thing. And very much like Chrome OS, it is right in the center. Also notice that all the curves, uh, there are no sharp corners. Uh, this is a gentler, kinder, kinder uh, operating system. Uh, the other thing that I want to point out is anybody who uses multi-monitor uh, will understand this. And I am being irradiated by four displays right now, two 4K, one 3K, and a 2K. Uh, your applications will, will auto-magically uh, snap to the right place. It will remember where it is. Now, Dell had a utility uh, that I used on its 49-inch display that would do this, but this is built right into the operating system. You know, sometimes you'll accidentally unplug a display, Daniel, uh, or you'll power off and you come back and like like all of your applications are in the wrong place. This fixes that. Maybe not a big thing for new users, but I think it's uh, pretty, 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 uh, pretty huge. Um, the other thing that's uh, that's cool is there. Uh, Microsoft is all in on collaboration, so much so they built Teams into the operating system and into the Start menu. And not only can you do Teams Teams, but you can also do uh, uh, iOS messages uh, via SMS and classic text messages. So they've merged uh, your phone and um, they've merged uh, Teams. I'm hoping the Teams will be uh, a lot. Uh, quicker, uh, being that it's built into the operating system, uh, it's almost uh, guaranteed. Gaming, listen, AAA gaming, Microsoft owns. No, no, you know, they added some performance features to this. New version of DirectX 12, direct storage. Um, Apple can barely uh, run uh, a full library of AAA games. So I think this is just piling on the advantage here. Um, I'm going to skip this because these are uh, 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 new, what I would call live tiles. They're not calling that, but they're calling them widgets. But we've had widgets and live tiles inside of uh, Windows uh, uh, for uh, forever. Let's get to the store, okay? First off, any type of application that runs on Windows can be hosted at the store. That's big. Second. Zero percent if you do not use Microsoft's Commerce Engine, 15 percent if you do. Compare that to Apple Store, which is 30 percent. And then uh, for smaller ISVs, 15 percent. I totally view this as a shot across the bow to make life more difficult uh, for Apple in, in the uh, global investigations that it, that it has uh, on this. Microsoft says it's going to be faster, uh, and I certainly hope so, because the current uh, Windows Store is slow. Uh, but boom, there's more Android freaking applications on the PC. Add that to Windows and Linux, and Windows is quickly becoming the most open operating system on the planet. Interestingly enough, they went with the Amazon App Store, I'm sure there's some financial arrangements going on there. Uh, I, I wouldn't imagine that 
Google would have an issue with this, but uh, we'll probably never un never know the details below this. But still, running window running Android apps on your Windows 11 platform. It was a little confusing at first because the company said they were using uh, Intel Bridge technology, and then you know everybody freaked out uh, about that uh, and said, "Oh my gosh, what about AMD and Qualcomm?" Well, AMD's covered and Qualcomm's covered. Uh, AMD is covered through Intel Bridge. Uh, no details yet on how Qualcomm will run it, but it would seem like Qualcomm on ARM would be running, even though it's an abstraction. You would, you have to abstract it. You wouldn't have to abstract it for x86. You'd have to abstract it for for Android to Windows. But it seems like it would perform uh, really uh, well. Um, and we also talked about security. There's no image there, but. I think the biggest commercial feature is this element of a zero trust architecture where everything needs a password or everything needs a key or everything needs to be a registered app. Uh, I believe that this is a, uh, a big uh, shot across the bow for um, Chrome OS. It's removing most of the security challenges, you know, being open uh, has kind of downsides, but being open and having zero trust is is incredible uh, as well. So all in all, I think this is really good for OEMs, really good for ODMs. And, you know, I had been pre-briefed on this stuff. And I'll tell you, Daniel, I was I didn't know at first. Right. I wasn't all in uh, on this. I didn't understand how some stuff we're doing. But if I look at the consumer side, which is running Android apps and beautiful uh, and some improvements, you know, I have to actually get my hands on it uh, to see how uh, integrated teams and accelerated edge works. But then the zero trust uh, on that, I mean, zero trust could drive an entire upgrade cycle uh, on the uh, commercial PC side, which is making everybody very, very happy. Yeah, so um, it's uh, lunchtime now, so we're gonna keep. No, just really quickly, um, you know, just to wrap this up, I sort of broke broke it down just into a couple of pieces here. You know, the launch focused on touch, speed, security, privacy, collaboration, AI, and then of course the evolving silicon support. Um, in terms of the overall play, look, M1 changed the game. You know, we're not. <clears throat> I'm not gonna sit here for a minute and say that. Um, you know, Windows and, and Intel and everyone just needs to worry about Apple, but the M1 ecosystem is changing and this was a good moment for Windows to come up with something new, something a little sleeker, something a little sexier and something that's going to be very compelling for that both commercial and consumer space. Driving on gaming, driving on app ecosystem, driving on being open yet being secure, all those things are part of this story. Uh, you know, of course, over the next few months, we're going to get the hardcore reviewers to get underneath the hood. We're going to hear how happy people are. Pat, you will be one of those people. I know you love to pull things apart, break them and put them back together. I will read your review. And meanwhile, <laughs> I will keep looking at those big picture views. But I think overall, good time, good moment, overall, a solid launch. 